Good morning, my base brethren. Here I am again. I've got my, uh, my tribute to Peter Cook's Fender Birds that he built specifically for John Entwistle in the early 70s. They featured a mahogany Thunderbird-shaped body with a maple Fender precision neck. Mine has a jazz bass neck on it, but don't tell anybody. Um, John would take, well, Peter Cook would take, the hardware from Gibson Thunderbirds, the pickups and the bridge, the tailpiece, and he would use those on a body that uh, resembled a Gibson Thunderbird, and it had the bolt-on fender neck, and John called these his Thunderbirds. And he kind of switched to these because he discovered he loved the sound of the Thunderbird, but they're a pretty fragile beast. Uh, Keith Moon notoriously knocked one off a stand while walking off stage and broke the headstock. So John really loved Fender Maple Necks. So he wanted to sort of combine what he felt was the best of both worlds with um, the Maple Fender Necks and the, the Gibson Thunderbird body shape, mahogany body, and the Thunderbird pickups. So the end result was what we call now the Fender Bird. So this is uh, my, uh, my replica um, of Peter Cook's Fender Birds, John Fertig, um, uh, AKA Barkless Dog on some of the base forums. Uh, about 10, well, probably more like 15 years ago, he commissioned a replica build of a Fender Bird. And, and at that point in time, it was probably the nicest one we had all seen. So John was kind enough to send me the pattern that he had, he traced his base, he took it all apart for me, which was very kind. So, and this is the end result. I built this body, geez, 12 years ago, and it got shelved, you know, I made a few mistakes, you know, there's a couple of router slips, and you know, just when uh, you're in that point in life where it's working kids, you know, it's tough to build bases. So I kind of shelved it and forgot about it, and I don't know, I'm, I'm closing in on retirement now, so I thought, hmm, maybe I'll start finishing up some of these projects I started. So this is the first one I pulled out of the pile. Um, I still need to level and buff the body, but um, I really was excited to put it together. So I ordered a, uh, uh, a 66S from the Thunderbucker Ranch. These are the hotter uh, Thunderbird pickups. The Thunderbuckers are my favorite replica pickups. I think uh, Steve Soar really nails the, the tone. Um, to me, they're, they're perfect. I, I love them. Um, right under here now is just an empty cover. Um, I don't use the bridge pickup on any of my Thunderbirds, to be honest. Most of mine are twos with uh, the one pickup. So right now, this is just going to have a, a, a cover here. I will eventually spring for another Thunderbucker. But, um, you know, COVID times and times are tight. Uh, I'm really just trying to save a little money. So but anyhow, I got it all together and I'm really pleased with it. It, it sounds like you would expect it to sound. It has that tone. Um, let, let, let's give a little listen. for this. Right now I'm playing through my uh, 70s Fender Bass Thin 10. I really like this for just uh, demoing basses and hanging out in my little music room and it's, it's got some grit and some tone to it. You can't push it too hard though. The speakers do not like that. So all in all for me it sounds how I expected it to sound. You know it's got the the snap of the maple neck and the grit and in the, in the, of the Thunderbird pickups and the, and the depth of the mahogany body. It's really a, a nice combination of tone woods and electronics. Um, it bass does feature uh, my Bad Bird bridge, though you could probably use any aftermarket Thunderbird bridge to, uh, to, to build one of these. Um, the tail piece is a reproduction before I started making them. My friend, my good friend who's since passed on, Bill Wallace uh, had a friend who used to, he used to pay in beer to make these out of stainless steel. So um, as my tribute to, to Bill, I leave this on here. Um, they did a really nice job, even though it's stainless steel, it looks all the world for nickel. Um, so there it is. It's, uh, I, I decided to go with witch hat knobs on this particular one as you know, John had that on some of his. Um, 
The, uh, the neck is a, a Mighty Might neck that at the time, about 10, 12 years ago, you could find these on eBay for about $99, which was a steal. And it's, it's really a nice neck. Um, the frets are excellent. I only had to do a little leveling in a few spots. Um, there's no fret sprout. And, uh, you know, it's a very stable neck. You know, I set it up and it stays where I want it. Uh, the tuners are 70s uh, repros by Fender. Um, they're not exact, though. They used to make them where the, uh, the clover leaf would taper right into the shaft, and now there's like a little 45 shelf there. Nitpicking, I know. But uh, anyhow, here it is. Grab my pick here. But uh, I really like how it sounds on the upper register. sustain that we all you know kind of associate with that whistle's tone so i hope you guys are having a good summer uh i've got more projects in the wings waiting to uh to get to those so uh i'll keep you posted and until then keep on rocking yeah.